Hello everyone, and welcome to part 7 of how to make Pong in Unity. So now, we're going to just finalize our score system, and then I want to create a menu for starting the game and quitting the application. And after that, in the next episode, we'll be creating an executable file to play the game. So let's get started with the scoreboard. Right now, if I go into the count score script, we are incrementing the score for when the position reaches a certain point on the x-axis. Now, I don't want to do this because there is potential that it will increment the score too much. So I want to make sure that this only gets activated for one frame. So the way I'm going to do that is create a public static bool named can add score. I want to initialize it to true. True. And now what this is going to do is check if the game is ready to update the score to a different value. And it's really going to go by when it's true or false. And the moment our ball goes more than 20 units away from the center, we want can add score to be false in order to make sure that these if statements cannot be accessed. Now, when it's going to be true is decided in our ball controller script. Here, I want to access the count score script, namely the can add score variable. And I want it to be set to true here. Also, I want this to be changed to 21f away. And that is just to ensure that the ball is going to be entirely off of the screen by the time we update the score. And because we did this, our scoreboard updates exactly how you would expect it. Now moving on to the next part, where we create a menu that has a play button to enter this scene, and a quick game button. And we'll also want it to enter our play scene when a player reaches a certain score. So what I'm going to do is just create a new scene. I want to name this Menu. So I'll walk you through what we're doing. Now I want to make the background of the camera black just so it matches our other scene. So what we want is to create a UI object with a button and like last time when we created our text it creates a canvas, our button, an event system, and our button has text on it. However it's positioned wrong and I want it to be in screen space camera and centered over the main camera. Then I want to create a second button and put it inside the canvas. And third, I want to create a text. So this first button, well, I want the left button to be the play button. And I'm going to name this game object play. And I also want the text to be play because that makes sense. And I want the scale to be 2. And I'm just going to move it to some place I like it to be. And I think the good spot for it would be negative 220 on the X and 100 on the Y. And I want this other button to be centered in almost the same spot. I want it to be the same size. But this time our text should be quit. This is the button you press when you're going to quit the game. Now, 
this other text. I'm going to name it title. And for this, I want it to be centered. And um, the title will be Pong. However, I want this to be white because having a black ba background and gray text just isn't going to look good. And the font size should be big, like 250. However, if I make it too big, it will disappear. This can be fixed by setting the overflow values to overflow. Maybe that's a little too big. Say 220. There we go. And if I were to click play and ent or enter the game view, I could see just a preview of what it would look like. And that looks nice. Well, I actually want to lower the buttons a bit. Say 155. Now, there's just one more modification I want to make to these buttons. That's making it so our pressed color, or yeah, the pressed color, is a bit darker. And even our highlighted color should be a bit darker. Now, if I were to click play, it dims a little when I'm hovering over it, and when I click it, it becomes much darker. All right, so in preparation to getting these buttons to work, we're going to just go into our build settings. What this is is just a manager for how to, to export a the game file, but for now we're just going to use it to enter different scenes at runtime. So what you should do is drag and drop our game scene and our menu scene. And what this will do is we can use this number to the right to enter different scenes. And this is because in Unity there's a there's a certain part of its API that says application.loadlevel quit, I believe. So we're going to use those, but we can't even use them unless we put the scenes we want to load into our build. All right, and now we're going to create a new component for our new script. Let's name this menu controller. We'll see what we can do with this for now. Okay, I'm not sure what's causing that. So here I've opened the menu controller script, and I just want to say using Unity Engine dot UI. And this is just so we can use certain features built in the user interface specifically pressing buttons. All right, so here I want to say public button and I need to name it. I'm going to have a play button and I'm going to have another public button known as the quit button. Now in the game, I'll go to canvas to my script and assign the different UI elements. All right, so in the next episode, we're going to make it so the play button and the quit button act as they are intended to. So the play button will enter the scene where we're playing Pong, and then we're going to make it so when we're going to make it so when our count score variable identifies that one of the bats has reached its current score. It will say uh, which player has won and then ask if you want to play again or quit. And a lot of it will go through code very similar to this script. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to use the exact same script for both the play again menu and the start menu. Anyway, thank you for watching. And I hope you stay tuned for the next one. Goodbye.